uh, Friday. Every, yes. Friday. Everybody, it, it actually means nothing, but just in case it means something to somebody, it's Friday. So ma mm -hmm. make sure you're wearing your pants. Um, t today, we're going to talk pricing strategies. But first, uh, Dakota Kraut uh, contacted me yesterday and said, hey, we've got uh, – We've got a book on pre-order, and it's already number two in its category while still in pre-order. And uh, uh, talk about that. Talk about the setup for uh, what you did to get that book out of the gates so fast. Absolutely. So um, first off, hi, Greg. Happy Friday. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, Where, are you so coming us from? Where are you coming to us from? I'm coming from the frozen north as well, but uh, not Alaska. So I'm in um, uh, North Dakota. So we're just shy of, of uh, Canada here. Um, so we are the uh, con uh, the continental, so uh, minus Alaska. I live in the coldest part of uh, the USA, minus Alaska. Yeah. And, with, <laughs> and with your with your wind chills, your winter is is comparable to ours. We yeah, generally we, don't have the wind because we live mm -hmm. in a bowl. But sure. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, we uh, we uh, two years ago we got down to negative seventy. So. It was, uh, yeah, it gets it gets pretty nasty here sometimes. With just just with that wind, you know, it's it's crazy bad. Um, but yeah, so book stuff. So um, it is really cool stuff. So something that you and I were talking about a little bit before the show gets started was that yeah, um, a percentage of, of pre-order sales definitely does go to um, the day one ranks, right? So um, you know what that percentage is, we'll probably never know for sure. <laughs> but uh, I, I do know that uh, what we were seeing was roughly. Uh, roughly 100 pre-orders a day consistently from the day that it uh, started, right? So from when we started our pre-order, we were seeing roughly 100 pre-orders a day. And because um, something we all know is that Amazon doesn't like to see spikes. It doesn't like to see all of a sudden you are here and then suddenly you're down here again. You know, it doesn't like up, down, up, down. It likes nice, consistent, gradual, it likes plateaus. Otherwise, you know, people can get nervous. Um, so <laughs> what I, what we're seeing is, um, like I said, consistent sales that got us to this point. And then, uh, today, uh, book went live and we, we launched at 188 in store. Right. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting, um, to see that. And <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to seeing what the rest of the day brings, you know? Um, but yeah, so there was a lot of stuff. Come back, Dakota. Come back. There you are. I yeah, have no happened? idea. No idea. Yeah. I was I, I was even touching my computer. I was waving my hands around. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> and, and I never touched anything either because it takes a, it takes an act of Congress to remove somebody from the stream because yeah, you absolutely. click because I, I can click remove from the stream and then there's then there's a a, a sanity check do you wish to remove this person? I didn't do any just all of a sudden you're gone man you're gone you were well, gone I'm rocketing back. up the charts yeah so, that's so, what, I did. so what, what did you what did you do to get those pre-orders okay. sales so one of the one of the biggest things so um, some people might not know this I, I actually do own a publishing company right so I have Mount Dell press um, uh, and you know, we focus on liturgy and England. And so we're able to see a lot more data than just with me. Right. So we're able to see, um, the books that we're launching, we, we really work hard to make sure that we take the best parts about the launches. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not Corona. It's, uh, it's the, uh, Claritin. So it's, yeah. it's not, it's not Corona. It's Claritin. Um, that's, that's what I tell people too. Right? Um, so the uh yeah so we we try to work hard to make sure that we're taking the best parts of every launch right so i, I really like to lead from the front i'm <coughs> sorry about that Ooh. and and use my books as the the guinea pig for testing new things i know right um so with the uh with this one kind of kind of some things that we were doing differently is we try to we tried a different price point we tried um uh, different dates for the actual pre-order to, to go out. And um, we also did some extra, um, you know, social media pushing and in, in various different ways. And one of the big things, I, I think, uh, yeah, allergies have been crazy brutal this year. Thank you, Karen, for pointing that out. Um, one of the things that has been really um, noticeable this time is that 
you know, there's there's an astounding lack of, of personal community that people are able to get out and do stuff with. So we've been looking at that and we've been saying, you know, with this launch, how can we boost that sense of community? How can we make uh, how can we make that happen for people even though we can't be together? Right. And so uh, in this last week, what we've done is we've done a um, uh, we have a plan for tonight. And tonight, uh, myself and 10 people are going to get on and uh, or tonight, myself and, and four other people are going to get on and play games together. But we are sending pizza like we're sending out pizza to uh, 10 people to join us and watch the like watch us play games. And we'll just do we're going to cool. do like an AMA. Um, so wherever they are, you know, if they won um, over the course of the week, we're sending them pizza, and I'm, I'm going to have pizza here with them. You know, I'm going to have like probably a slice. You know, just trying to trying to keep that author butt down. But uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it's it's working hard to build that community and, and give people a sense of of uh, you know togetherness, even though we're all apart right now. Um, so that's a big thing we did. Uh, another thing was uh, we're trying we're trying a few new programs, and and one of them was uh, a program called a viral right so it's uh it gives uh basically rewards and and, and such for uh various levels of sharing on social media um posting stuff uh, commenting um going to the pages all these different things that you've seen um and you know one of the one of the things about that though is i, I will tell people to be careful um it, it works once like it works well once right and that's kind of the thing like if you are having a launch and you use this thing and you're like, hey, share these posts, get new people in, do all this stuff, that's great. But if those people are already in, obviously you can't get them in a second time. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like. Um, yeah. So pick, pick a launch and, and try to do something similar, you know, where you're getting all these huge likes and shares and big sweepstakes giveaway sort of thing. Um, and, and, you know, like I'm, I'm always happy to share stuff, but um, also, I don't think it's ever going to work for me again. So there's there's that. Um, so good big launch with a lot of these different tactics of you know community building, um, you know like uh, social media pushing, um, obviously our paid advertising. But yeah, I mean tr we're we're trying new things and we're always we're always testing new stuff, right? Um, and that's just kind of what marketing is, though, and selling books is, is is constant moving forward and finding the new thing that we can use to get a larger market share, right? So if we have good market penetration and we have good uh, market expansion, obviously then we're getting large market share. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's pretty much all I have, unless you have questions. And and remember, it's all use. Oh, oh, you bet. You bet. <laughs> uh, what what book number is this in the series? Uh, so according to Amazon, it's five. Okay. Um, and I, I have a kind of a, a side story in there though. Um, that's good and useful and pertinent. Um, but that is a side story. So th to me, this is book four to Amazon it's book five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so it is, it is not the first book in a series. You did this for a follow on book. Yes. So you have, you have good, you have good read through and stuff. What kind of, exactly. uh, uh, pre-order numbers did you have? So, uh, we, we went over 3000 on this one. Um, so that was, that was pretty exciting. Um, uh, especially since, you know, people definitely have less available cash right now and, and, and knowing that it's going to be on Kindle Unlimited, I wasn't expecting those numbers at all. Yeah. Um, so to see people who are, who are still interested and still okay. invested in, you know, helping out the authors and, and doing stuff like that yeah. is, is really cool. So and thank then, you to anyone if you, if you got the book. <laughs> and, and this is and this is lit RPG, so a little yes. longer book. So what was the book length and what was the price? Uh, so the book length. So uh, this one clocked in at I think one hundred sixteen thousand uh, okay. for for word count. Um, and so we uh, again, yeah, it was fifth book in the series. So we were trying it at a new price point um, of five ninety nine, right? So so typically we typically we stick at four ninety nine, um, and you know, just say 20,000 words per dollar. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, again, this is longer books. They're, um, pretty chunky books and they do take uh, a couple of months to get out, you know? So, um, that's, you know, one of those things that we were just testing that price point to see if it was valid for books in the future, especially as the series gets longer. Um, yeah. you know, we gotta increase that so that we can keep that series going. 
Um, but again, I was I would have been entirely happy with zero pre-orders and, and lots and lots of KU. Either way works for me just fine. You know, whatever whatever gets people in and reading is what uh, is what I'm after. So. That's great. Those are uh, mm -hmm. those are great numbers. Uh, when we when we tried the uh, the four ninety nine pricing from three ninety nine a few years ago, mm -hmm. the uh, <clears throat> the the readers rebelled. They were like, "Oh, mm -hmm. you're price gouging just because mm -hmm. this is book nine in the series, and you're 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 screwing us." And so we changed the second line of our uh, of our blurb, two books for the price of one because it also was one hundred and seventeen k, but mm -hmm. our normal books were sixty k. Uh it's yeah. like, geez, an extra sixty k for a buck! Oh my mm -hmm. god! And and uh, thank goodness, other readers jumped in and said, "You got to be kidding me! This is twice as long for a buck. I'm in." Mm -hmm. And then and then the page reads just murdered it. So uh, that made it, made it well worthwhile. But we had that initial uh, initial uh, uh, conflict with the reader saying, hey, you're price gouging because you know we have to get this book, but you suck. And I was like, geez, <laughs> I, I, I don't suck. But you'll also notice that I moved out of melee range and into ranged weapons uh, there range you go. because of your uh, your coronavirus cough. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and, and uh, it's funny. Uh, we, we actually, I don't know, we have merchandise now, obviously, right? So uh, we have a shirt that says, uh, Please maintain social different distancing of six feet. Otherwise, you're in melee range. Yeah. Um, and yep. uh, that, that that's been a pretty good pretty good shirt. I'm gonna I have a couple ordered for myself. But <laughs> yes, um, yes, I mean, that's uh, it's apropos. It's easier than saying oh six feet. Mm -hmm. Now, now this is broadsword range, bitch. Move out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can swing and hit you. You're too close. Um, yep. Yep. Cool. So uh, I, I see a couple of questions. Do you want to? Um, I, I'm I'm out of uh, mouse click range too. Had to move oh, in. Nice. Hang on. <laughs> As we get closer to the screen. There we go. All right. All right. So uh, it says, uh, "What pricing strategy do you use for when you are releasing a later book in series?" Um, so typically, typically we we have been staying at a single price point the whole way through. Um, so oftentimes, what we'll do is say uh, a later book in series is coming out. So say book five is coming out. Oftentimes what we'll do is we'll drop the first book down to 99 cents, second book comes to 199, third book comes to 299, but then it stays as normal price throughout for the rest. Um, and, and part of that is, you know, as a, as a publisher, I, I have more than just my own personal um, interest in mind. Like obviously if my authors can't write full time because they aren't making enough to write full time, then my book production for our company slows down significantly. And so uh, it's, it's definitely a balancing act between bringing in uh, readers and keeping readers and also being able to keep the um, authors in our um, you know, publishing house uh, fed and you know, in a livable income. So yeah, uh, yep. so it, yeah typically it, it fluctuates. We're, we're always testing new things, um, but Usually uh, the later books stay at, at full price and usually the first and second in series will become the loss leader for us. So, yeah. That's a, it's a, <clears throat> I've, uh, for promotions, I'll drop the prices, but generally I keep, uh, I keep every book, including the first book at full price and ads will convert <laughs> if the ad has a good blurb. The, uh, the book is, the first book is good, which as we, we try to make every first book, not just good, but great. Amazing. And, and amazing, yes. Yeah, somebody where they, oh, geez, I got to keep reading. A great story. I need to see what happens next, <clears throat> with no with no cliffhanger, and mm -hmm. doing so. I keep it a four ninety nine, so then I can price it down to ninety nine. Makes it easier to get a book bub off at, off at a book bub feature deal or something like mm -hmm. that. And uh, just recently, I did a, a free, which goes into pricing strategies. <laughs> I, I did a free on my book one ninety nine on book two and book three and four left full price. And uh, we, we slaughtered it uh, there, too. That was last week. That was my trad pub. Those guys, uh, we hit number 41 overall. In wow. The I saw that. So, uh, it, was, uh, it was huge, and then it came out of it, and it was still rocking because this is a, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. They do have some horsepower whenever they hit their list with a book, and it had been a good year, two years since we hit the list. And we hit it uh, with the free, and they they bought the fr they got the free, and then they bought the rest of the series. So we had uh, nice. great read through, and the numbers were really good. That's but uh, that's, uh, 
We've got one other question, and then uh, I'll let you go, and we'll uh, get That's into good. pricing That's strategies. <laughs> I, had to, I had to print it because I didn't have the paperback. I'm like, what the hell? And I went into my files. I'm like, holy Christ, I never even ordered a cover. So the book's been out for a year, and uh, or almost a year, and uh, I, I never had a paperback made out of it. So <laughs> I'll, I'll get working on that as one of uh, a few things. So. Here you go. Gotcha. New question. All right. So how do you hold on to KU readers during pre-order? Do you ask them to follow you on Amazon or join the newsletter uh, or some other magic trick to get them to jump board and read in KU? Um, so this is an interesting one. So with, with my genre, um, so that's Loot RPG and Gamelet, um, I, I would really say that uh, the vast majority of the readership, I'd say, I'd say easily 95% or higher um, is KU only. Um, so they, they come in and they do not buy books. They are like almost exclusively whale readers. So they come in and they will read everything that exists. Like, you know, they'll just go through like a swarm of locusts, you know? And, um, so they'll read everything that exists, but if they have to buy all of those books individually, they would go broke in a day. Um, so I, I really think that's one of the biggest things is my genre is specifically kind of geared toward Kindle Unlimited readers. Um, and I'm always, uh, frankly, I'm always kind of shocked when I see high pre-order numbers because, um, just because so many of them are, uh, you know, whale readers, they're, they're reading big chunks of stuff. And so to to go out and buy that is really a, a huge show of, of uh, um, how much they love the books, which is, you know, huge, yeah. um, nice, uh, what, am I, what am I trying to say? It's a huge uh, uh, compliment to myself you know, to, yeah. to see them actually buying it. Um, so with, with that, of course, we do ask them to follow me on Amazon, join newsletters. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, I think even Craig was talking about this recently, how um, Amazon had, if not stopped, they had put a large slowdown on putting out, sending out the new release emails. Um, and I have been seeing a few of my people getting them recently, so I don't know uh, you know, I don't know how much that's going to impact this. So, you know, just something we'll have to see and test over time. Um, cause you know, what is the new normal is, is something that we're really gonna have to figure out. So, yeah. So I've seen, I've seen a few and I've seen <clears throat> actually both of my new releases in the last month have gotten a new release notification. So thank mm -hmm. goodness. Uh, one was, yeah. one was almost at the end of the window. Uh, it was, I think March 11th when people mm -hmm. stopped getting those. <clears throat> and so my new releases in April, both of them, both of them uh, uh, got that newsletter just within a uh, Mike Landerly, he's, he, I, I follow him. So I've only gotten five releases from him. And I know that was like one week's worth. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they're just incrementally catching up and, or, or if they will, how far they'll go back or, or okay. if they ever will on some of those. But with all things done, you can always contact them and said, Hey, could you send out a new release alert on this book if you if you know for a fact that they never sent one? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's something that is in your tool in your toolkit that you can do. Now you may not get it, but if you don't ask, ask you definitely won't. Especially exactly. if it's especially if it's older than thirty days. I think mm -hmm. because of bringing the servers back up and giving that space back to the newsletter management, because what mm -hmm. they they needed that computing power, so that's why they didn't. That's why they took it. Uh, to manage the other things. I think Amazon orders were up like 158% or something. It was insane. Some, some, some crazy huge numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> they man they had to, they needed the server space to manage that. All right. Thanks, Dakota. Really appreciate Absolutely. your time. Thank you very Absolutely. much. And, and, and thanks for having me, Greg. All right, we'll keep do. rocking that <laughs> one, man. You're That's gonna, the plan. What are you, what are you, you going to hit? 25 today? 25? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping for top 10. Um, that's, okay. I mean, that's all, that's always the goal. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, last time we got to, um, uh, 13 and 14 respect respectively. And I'm really looking to crack that top 10 this time. Yeah. Think, and of I course, of, number one, number one is the goal, right? Always. Number one's always well, the I goal. I think part, part of the holdup on that is you already had 3,200 people buy it and you only get a percentage of that on the, uh, off the pre-orders. So those are 3,200 sales that you're not going to get today. That's okay. So <laughs> you're, if you're going to, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get well into the top 100 and congratulations, man.
Well, thank you so much, Greg. And, and thanks to everyone else who's on here. And uh, hopefully I said a couple of things that helped you. Um, and yeah, so good luck and uh, do great things. <laughs> All right, man. All right. See you later. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. I'm back. A little, uh, little tidbit uh, when Dakota told me of the, the numbers he was rolling. I thought, yeah, let's have him on and talk about that because pre-orders, I, I am now becoming more and more a fan of pre-orders especially since author rank uh, went away. So I was artificially driving something that uh, actually didn't matter in, in a relative sense. And the book rank, yes, the book rank is important, but you, you do get a certain percentage of those sales credit towards your book rank. So uh, with 3,000 sales, especially since the majority of those were within the last week, I think. Ah, itchy face. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, the majority of those, so all of that rank goes forward. And then Amazon helps those who help themselves. They're seeing this book with a nice ramp up in sales. They see a spike today, some more tomorrow and the next day. And uh, then they'll give it some loving as well. And that's that's what it takes. If, if you get no sales, Amazon is not going to give you any additional support. So you've got to, you have to drive those. How do you drive sales? Ah, Self-destructing here. Um, how do you drive sales? Um, pricing strategies, one thing, pricing strategy. I had to print this. Yeah, I printed it and stapled it in the garage. Uh, the pricing strategy, the first thing first thing that I do is uh, just what's what's the price of the books? And I, independent of length, I make all my books $4.99. Uh, omnibus editions that are ebooks only are $9.99. And all my paperbacks, I just simply, what's... Uh, what is the minimum price Amazon will charge? And that's your, your price to produce plus the shipping and handling and, and add $5. So I get a $5 margin on each of those. And, and that's, uh, that's how I price my paperback. So you'll see paperback prices all over the place. But my ebook prices, you'll see a nice consistent uh, $4.99. All of my uh, like pricing strategy, all those are 99 cents right now because of, uh, because of the virus and, and uh, people being, being shut in. So just doing a little something to help out. But the pricing strategies, and, or, and this is one thing, it goes to managing reader expectations. Uh, every time we changed prices, we had a, a rebellion of, of sorts until people settled down and realized what we were doing. And that, hey, at, at 99 cents, I can't keep writing. If you want these stories, then we need, we need $2.99 when they're on sale, and $4.99 is what we need because that gives us the, uh, the bank to – Pay for new covers, keep editing and uh, and advertising, bringing more readers on board. So all of that stuff, and really the nirvana is getting those full price sales through ads. You you hook them, and this is when we talked to Brian Cohen about blurbs. It is so critical to have that blurb convert because that's your that's the nirvana. Have that blurb convert at full price off an ad. Because if you're doing your ad calculations off a 99 cent book, now you only have 35 cents to play with. If your cost per click is, even if it's only five cents, that means you need to make a sale out of every seven, out of every seven clicks to break even on that one. And now if it's a series, you'll do okay. But uh, a lot of people, they're not getting five cents. They might get 25 cents. And if you're only making 35, now you only get less than two clicks in order to get your money back on that one book. You can have a loss leader, but how much of a loss can you uh, can you withstand before uh, how many books into the series to get your money back off the first one? And because you're not gonna have 100% read through, you'll have something south of that. If it's 99, great, well done. If it's uh, 90 or 80, by the time you get to the fifth book, the whole numbers, okay, so that, that 35 cents, you make 350 on the second book that's 499, and then it tapers off and all of a sudden it's three books in order to get your money back if your spend is too high or your conversion rate is too low, like a, a 30 to one. That's an awful lot of clicks that you're paying for that people aren't buying. I like the 10, you're shooting for 10. 10 clicks for one sale, anything better than that is great. Uh, and and massage only if it's 30 to one trash your blurb and go get something else or change your targeting because uh, they're not converting 
And I'm always talking about the first book. That's where I, I put the majority of my effort is the first book in a series. If you have a bunch of standalones, then you have to invest that kind of effort in each book as well as uh, calculating your, your ROI, your return on investment. So if you have a 99 cent book and it's a standalone, you've got to get a sale for 35 cents worth of clicks just to break even. So uh, understand that uh, that's a tough, very, very tough uh, field to uh, plow and make uh, make bare, bare vegetables for you. So the, the pricing, understand first, understand the macro strategy. What's it take to make money in this business? If you have one book out, it will be challenging to make money. But you, what you can do is you use that as establishing your brand as an author. Take that one book and loss leader, but that means you're not making money on it. But it doesn't mean you have to keep just flushing money down the drain, getting exposure, the magical exposure on Amazon. Like, uh, hey, here's one book. I'm advertising the hell out of it. I'm getting a buttload of impressions, not getting a whole lot of sales, but people know who I am. No, they'll forget who you are. If you're getting 30 impressions and no sales, they're, they'll, you're eminently forgettable. So you don't want that. Even if you have one book, you still want conversions. You still want people picking up your book and loving you. Uh, loving you is what the fans, uh, that's your, that's the bar. You got to get over that loving you bar. Let's see. <clears throat> As you move on, as you have more books and your brand, you're establishing your brand. That's when you can branch out and go into uh, different genres and different things, but you need to have that base so you understand what kind of money you have available to spend to get more readers into onto your train. You're driving the train and you want people piling on, you want uh, like the trains in India or people hanging off the roof, that's the train you wanna be driving. It takes them loving your stories so once again, I always come back, you have to write the very best story you can write and you need to write them as quickly as you can write them. Don't sacrifice, don't say, well, I'm just gonna write a book and, and throw it out there and I'll write the next book. Make sure it meets your minimum standard for a book that you would keep reading. This is important because I, I, everybody targets themselves first before they get savvy in the business and uh, and, and expand to, okay, these readers, I know my book is like this, but these are the readers who are picking it up and reading it and liking it. So I'm gonna target more like them, as opposed to, I wanna target people like me, because uh, you may not be representative of the larger demographic that would buy your book. So more marketing, but the pricing, how do you get those people on board? So let's talk about free, uh, there's a lot of people out there spreading rumors that free doesn't work anymore. Uh, blanket shotgun free isn't good. That's not going to get you what you want. It might get you a lot of downloads. It won't get you any reads. It'll get you almost no read through. So, for, but targeted free last week, we ran for five days. <clears throat> book one of a four book series with my, uh, my traditional publisher was free. I, I asked him, Hey, can you make this free for these five days? Sure. No problem. I asked him to put it in KU uh, two years ago and they did because they're like, Hey, you run the marketing. I mean, I, I pay for the marketing too. So trad, they got me into Barnes and Noble. They got me exposure. Uh, we have a great working relationship and it's just like me having my own books. Yes. I pay for the marketing. I pay for the ads. I pay for promotions, but they, uh, they are very congenial and they'll do whatever, whatever I ask in regards to making this book available and keeping it at the front of conversations. So if there's four books in this series. The first book is only 50,000 words. We made it free, almost 9,000 downloads. So that was a combination of free booksy, a few other promotions, some newsletter shares, swaps, some social media promotions, and then they hit their list, which is post-apocalyptic uh, centric. It is very, very focused on post-apocalyptic. When I uh, uh, first published with them nearly four years ago, they hit their list and the whole series launched into bestseller, uh, bestseller status, the first three books, just because they hit their list and everybody bought. So, and and it was overpriced at the time, a 50,000 word book, they had 699 as the ebook price for each of the volumes. So since then, we've reduced the prices to uh, 499 each. And actually, I think we've kept book one at 99 cents. 
just to say, here, here's a loss leader. And it has worked fairly well because now we're counting on the audio that goes with it. But uh, getting a book into people's hands free, it, it still works if you target the right readership. Readership who, are, who have an empty cart browsing the Costco aisles and you give them a sample and they look like they like potato chips and you're giving them a potato chip sample. Those are the people most likely to buy. If you're outside the store giving potato chip samples to people just walking by, that's what most people do with their free stuff. They shoot it out there and, and just hope that, hey, somebody walking by on the street will not just take their potato chip, but then go into the store and find where they can buy it. And that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is you're standing right in the potato chip aisle, handing out your potato chips saying, hey, these are just as good as Lay's. These are just as good as these over here. And you don't have to tell them that. You let them try it and say, hey, I like this. And that's what your free sample does when you use it right. So think of the, think of the grocery store, even though no one's ever going to get a free sample again. And so the, the sample people who used to work in the stores, I'm sorry, they're, they're out of work now. But uh, that was that's an example that everybody can embrace and, and understand the difference and how you want to get your free books out there. Marketed, uh, targeted, it's very, very specifically for your genre and genre equals marketing, the biggest genre who will like your books. That's what you want. Give it to them free here. If you have a number of books, if you have no other books, you have one book, the second book is coming out next week. I would call, please, please uh, save yourself a lot of grief and do not put it for free figuring, hey, they'll love you and then buy your book next week. Next week, they'll forget you exist. So wait until they can immediately impulse buy at least one more volume, preferably two. And then and then you can hook them. And we saw this last week. We gave non, nearly 9,000 copies away, but we got, what, 75 buys of book three at full price, another uh, 50 buys of book four at full price, another 65 volume uh, audiobooks for the whole series so all of the impulse buy free but here's the other books buy you know and people want people are collectors and, at heart they're not going to buy one book and just leave it languish but if they see that the second book with the ad the we had our ads shaped with first book free second book 99 cents and then the other two books because you got to read all of you got to read the whole series and uh we we had a great great conversion rate Despite uh, despite a number of one star reviews, I got bombed one star reviews when I first started, and uh, I, I don't know why, but it did. And uh, those are all sitting there, and it still moved a lot of books, got a lot of positive support. It uh, it has sold a lot. It has made good money over its lifetime so far, and it got a big bump this past week. That's what free did for me. Uh, 99 cents. Understand your now your margin is now 35 cents on that book because uh, you just and uh, and some books. If you have a box set that's too big, Amazon won't let you price it at 35 cents. You have to do something to cut the size down, so uh, it, it's it's smaller when they when they do the upload. So your delivery fee, they're not eating too much of the delivery fee, which. If you get the 70% option, they just charge you. They don't care how big it is. They'll charge you the delivery fee up until you, you get no royalty. So you go 35% on it if it has a big delivery fee. Uh, some of the bigger volumes, I've been limited to 199. Hey, it's okay. You just say 3,000 pages for 199. You just, you just try to offset that within a reader's mind. I've had great success with a blurb that the second line was, over 3,000 pages of reading, over 2,000 pages in one volume. And people look, 2,000 pages, oh, buck 99, sure. I can't go wrong. If I don't like it, who cares? It's only a buck 99. So uh, uh, the thought process, you're trying to get into a buyer's thought process. Let's see. <clears throat> the... Uh, Nirvana is your full price, and also that's the price you show Am uh, BookBub if you put in for a feature deal. Hey, it's normally priced nine ninety nine. I'm putting it for ninety nine cents. They like ninety percent discount, so you could say, hey, ninety ninety nine, ninety nine cents now, ninety percent discount. They're good with that kind of change, 
if you normally have it at two ninety nine and go to ninety nine cents, well, I think their minimum is at least fifty percent off. But I think they do that for for trad and some other uh, higher end folks that they are are uh, giving premier space to. So you need the big discount to to get to get BookBub's attention. Yes, you can get it with other things, but everything you can do to improve your chances, like don't go with a set date and things like that. If you need a set date, put it in there and and take your chances, but be but have a good backup plan in case you don't get the BookBub, the BookBub feature. Okay, okay. Uh, we do have one question. Story Origin doesn't integrate with SunFox and I wouldn't use Story Origin. There you go. Um, <clears throat> I know I know Story Origin. Uh, they just did a show. SPF uh, highlighted them. They do a lot of stuff. It's no cost. Understand, and this is a Mal Cooper taught me this. If you don't have to pay for the product, you are the product. Uh, so all of this stuff, nothing is free. So when you have a free service, understand that that service is collecting all of that data that you're generating and then using it to improve their marketing for when they do have a, a, a paid product of some sort. So I, I don't I don't I don't know Evan Gao. He runs Story Origin. I know he was trying to build this platform and, and good for him. And he's built it and made it available. I would rather see him charge and make sure that, hey, you're getting this stuff. But you're going to you're going to pay at some point in time because I need to make money off this, because if, if you never have to to pay, then how is he making his money off this product? This is this is the question. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Evan, that's that's my question. I'd say, hey, ch start charging people, even if it's a minimum, at least saying here, this is how I'm I'm monetizing all of my work. Otherwise, we have to wonder, how are you monetizing your work that you're you're investing a huge, huge amount of work into this product that actually works really well? So that would be my question. I wouldn't use it until I know how it's monetized just to be uh, just to keep my data, protect my data. OK. Pricing strategies. I got to keep reminding myself what I'm talking about. Um, uh, let's talk omnibus editions real quick because I talked about a nine ninety nine. Why nine ninety nine? Amazon says seventy percent up to nine ninety nine. So all of your pricing research data, Amazon has already done that, and they've taken hundreds of thousands of sales, millions probably by this point, and said the sweet spot is between two ninety nine and nine ninety nine, where we can convert the most sales, which in uh, which results in the most money made for Amazon. And seven, hey, we can pay 70% on royalties. I know I know, Apple started that. Amazon said, yes, but. Because uh, we talked to draft to digital and they said, if you're wide through them, you get 60% is what you get on prices below 299. Well, Amazon is trying to drive people to that higher price paint point so they can, they can make more money off the conversions because if you're somewhere lower, uh, they're not making a whole lot because of the overhead. And if you're somewhere higher, you're not getting the conversions, even though they get to keep the majority of it. $299 to $9 is the sweet spot for, for pricing. Amazon has done a lot of stuff. They do data. So understand that's why the 70% is limited to those prices. <clears throat> so you get your, you price it somewhere in there, box sets. I don't care how many pages they are, the top end that we price it. Now, during the pre-order, we priced it at $19.99. Why? We really don't want people to buy it on pre-order. Uh, and, uh, and also show them the value. Once again, $19.99 priced down to $9.99. Hey, we're giving a 50% discount as soon as we publish. And we're really trying to drive page reads with, with those. <clears throat> I've, got, uh, I've got some box sets, omnibus editions that I've published that are at 99 cents. I know I was adamantly posed last year. Don't do this. You're, you're racing to the bottom. Don't don't price things at 99 cents. But there's so much out there. I did 2.99. I invested a lot of time and money in trying to get a 2.99 uh, omnibus edition up in the ranks. Get it on in uh, also bots of like authors, and I just couldn't move it in there. <clears throat> and uh, the profit margin was not there because I didn't move the quantities. 
and it did and by not getting the rank i didn't get the exposure to buyers who are ku readers 99 cents you get all of that and now i'm getting great page reads i'm getting uh, you know what 40 50,000 off one omnibus edition a, a, a day for 99 cents you're like geez buy it for 35 cents and that omnibus edition is over 3000 pages so one full read is worth like 1350 I'm good with 1350 and uh, 1350 on a page read, or they could have bought it for 35 cents. But, and here's the marketing challenge. If you take a big box set of, from people who like it and, it, and Hey, I want to keep this. They might buy it because, Hey, now I have it and it doesn't take one of my 10, my coveted 10 slots. So you can't, you can't assume that your people, your fans, are going to read it in KU just because you want them to. So you got to tell them. So when I sent out my newsletter, it says, hey, I would prefer that you read this in KU. If you're going to do a reread of this series, wait until next week, next month, when I put out the box set, read the whole thing in one pop in KU, understand it, it you already have the membership. So read it there. I get a, I get a, a nice uh, chunk from Amazon and I appreciate it. If you want to buy it, sure, just understand. I just tell them, here's, here's how it works for me. One, it costs you a buck. The other, it doesn't cost you anything extra. And, uh, you know, I might get 1350 out of it. So, so I do have a lot of people who then reread it. And if I keep it at 99 cents long enough or say, I will price it down to 99 in another month and a half or something like that. And then they can buy it then if they want to want to just keep it and have it. And I get great response from my readership. Sure. I'll do that. I'll read it in KU. I was just going to buy it, but great. It doesn't take very many of those people before, hey, this is this is a lucrative box set. The best thing about an omnibus edition or box set is you make money and you don't have to write new books. So that uh, I, I turn everything into a box set. I wait until the books start dropping in rank. I saw somebody post today that 50,000 will consistently down to like 50,000 for a, an individual book in the series. And I would say the first book because if the first book isn't converting to the second book, the third book, people are buying the first one, but they're not the second, third, you can do the box set and you're not going to get the, the sales because people aren't going to keep reading or you're not going to get the KU page reads you were hoping for because there's something in that first book that's holding them back. But if they're reading the series and liking the series, just put it out there and, uh, and make money. It might be six months, a year. Patience. Patience is, uh, is, is your key to making more money. Because you, you're, you are going to lose some individual book sales, but you're not going to lose all of them. And actually, you're only going to lose a few, but your marketing budget, here you've got your money that to spend, you can spend it on book one and then also spend it on the box set because sometimes they're, they're different readers. And some people might say, well, it's like only a 10%, 20% overlap. Possibly true. Possibly true. In my case, I see that, that once fans like a series, they're willing to, to take the whole box set they are the same readers in probably three out of four instances. <clears throat> so how can I make the most of that? I encourage them to, to read it and reread it in KU. And then I target all that marketing on KU readers. And if they don't know me, they're more likely to check it out in KU as opposed to buying it because, hey, they see it even at 99 cents. If you target like new readership and then bring them on board, and then a lot of good uh, good stuff in the back matter. Hey, here's my series. Here's other stuff. Here's how you can follow me on my newsletter on Amazon. All kinds of ways to stay in touch and sell them more books when you have a, 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 sub, a substantial backlist. So free, 99 cents. Of, keep that to a minimum on your first book unless you have a number of books beyond it in order to build an ROI, a return on your investment, and at the macro level. They call uh, book one a loss leader. Don't let it be the loss super leader where you lose on that. Nobody's reading the next books. And now all of a sudden, it's just all a big loss. So you got to figure out what does it take to move that first book into hands that will possibly buy the second book. And if, if people like a book, if you're priced, I mean, if they really like a book, you're, you're not going to price yourself out of the market. Whatever you put within reason, and I, that's up to the 999. Because Trad, you'll see they're trying to drive hardback sales. So they might have like a new Dean Arcoontz might be 
$16.99 for the ebook, but you can buy the hardback for $14.99 on Prime. They're trying to drive those because they bought all those hardbacks and they have them in a warehouse. Whereas ebooks, they're trying to drive a certain type of sales. You can have a $9.99 price on a box set if you're trying to drive KU, but make sure on your ads you you target uh, KU readers. And and you can do that, you can narrow that in a in a certain way. You can't mention KU on your Amazon ads. So <clears throat> there's your challenge. You have to find who are the big authors where their readers are mostly KU. So if you're urban fantasy, you're going to target Mike, Mike Landerly because most of his readers are whale readers and they read in Kindle Unlimited. So just, just understand how that works. Do I have a different strategy of pricing when rebranding a series? I would say I do because time. When I, when I rebrand a series, it's one that has aged. When I initially launched, it may have been a different one. And I'm doing that with a book that launches in 10 days. My Monster Case Files, I launched it. I had it in the wrong genre. I had bad covers on it. I thought they were good. I thought they would pull in the right readers. They did not. Okay. We take that data. We unpublished all of them. I finished, I finished a rewrite. I, wrote, I rewrote uh, all a quarter million words in seven days. It was a, 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 kind of a kind of a significant effort, but we got this volume, quarter of a million words. I've got it with all the proofreaders right now. I've gotten two, uh, two sets of feedback left uh, back, and it's looking good. It's looking choice. Um, Rebranding, I'm going to box all of them together in one set, and we put it on pre-order for $2.99. <clears throat> uh, we've, got, we've got a fairly decent number of pre-orders so far. And this is this is mystery, so it's not either of our genres because I'm publishing it through uh, Michael Anderley's company, urban fantasy, uh, science fiction, some uh, some fantasy, and then uh, me with my my science fiction and stuff. This one's a mystery, so still getting some pre-orders once again because because me last year we published it under a pen name that nobody knew what it was, so we killed that. Went, just put my name on the cover and Catherine Hurst, she's a, my co-author with that series. And that's how we're marketing it. And it's much better because now I, I built my brand in such a way that my name sells. So people are willing to give it a shot. And with the rewrite, it reads very smoothly. It's engaging. That's the only reason I was able to rewrite it in, in such a short amount of time was it was such an engaging read with the tweaks and, and the flow. It uh, just evening out the tops, keep the, the bottoms from getting low. And uh, man, it uh, I really like how it came out, but that's neither here nor there. Repricing, $2.99, and we're just going to try to drive page reads. I'm going to hit the uh, uh, advertising very heavily, trying to drive KU because uh, people don't know me. So they're not going to invest $2.99 if they really don't know this author. And they may, after they start reading it, and say, hey, I, this is kind of a good story. I like it. That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're shooting for. So different track, individual books. Uh, I've re I've uh, re-rolled, put new covers on them. And uh, one thing, Terry Henry, we pr priced that at two ninety nine right out of the gate. That was four years ago, or three and a half years ago. And then we upped it to three ninety nine. We upped it, all the volumes are four ninety nine now. So it uh, you, when you do that. Now, you're not going to alienate old readers because they already have the books. And new readers, the first time they see it, if it's all $4.99, hey, it's good. So rebranding, yes. <clears throat> okay, where are we here? What strategies do you use to target KU readers? You can target KU readers better on Facebook. And on Amazon, you target KU readers by finding those authors who are making bank in KU. And that's uh, you. You you look at the books. You see if the what the ebook is priced, and if they're in KU, and what the book rank is, and you try to interpolate and see. Hey, there they are. I mean, J.K. Rowling is the the curve buster. So don't don't look at her books as an, a paradigm of the the greater market. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's what I would say. New pen name. It's, you have to build everything from scratch. 
the big thing with pricing strategies is you have to hook readers. You cannot make, if you're a brand new author, and a lot of authors, we've seen this on 20 books, and it's, it's heartbreaking to see somebody come in, well, I'm looking at the profit margin. I need to price my book at $9.99 in order to make this whole effort worthwhile. And they're a brand new author, untried. It's their first book. They're pricing at $9.99 in a market where every other book is $4.99. Guess what is never going to sell? So this is something you have to do your research. You have to see where you fit. You have to uh, understand that <clears throat> you can't break in that way. You're not going to get, unless uh, you've got somebody doing a major push for you. If you've got a uh, James Patterson says, hey, these, this is the best book I've read this month. Then, okay, yeah, you can price what you want. But otherwise, if it's just me coming out of the blue, hey, here's my book. I need this. For, no, business models don't work that way. You have to get, you have to move the volume in order to get the loving from Amazon and the readers. You need the readers to love you. That's the biggest, that's, a, that's the most influential thing that can happen with your books. Pricing, free, 99 cents, all of that goes to the promotions to get your book into as many hands as possible who are most likely to like your book. And then when they do, that's when you're going to start to see some momentum, your momentum shift. When I first started publishing, it took me 11 months before I, I got that momentum shift because I was finally able to get my books into enough hands and establish myself as, yes, this is an author I want to read for, for this sect of readers. And then it's all been, it's all been uh, gravy since then in a, in a relative sense. So you've got to establish those readers. If you're a brand new author, the best thing you can do is get your have a reader magnet of some sort in order to give readers a very viable sample of your writing, of your, when I do that, I'm looking at the clock. When I, when I uh, a very viable sample of your writing, don't put out something that has nothing to do with the books you're trying to sell behind it. Make sure it is very, very representative that it is your best style that is free of typos and anything because everything you put in front of a reader, initially, the first time a reader sees you, they need to be impressed. So don't just say, hey, I'm going to whip together a short story and put it out there. If you're established, hey, hey, I put this out there. It's unedited. I just want you guys to have a free short story because you've been great. I do that and the, the fans love it. And, I'm like, and they'll, they'll send me back. Oh, hey, I found a few typos. Great. I appreciate it. But uh, unedited, that's once you have the fans, then they appreciate, hey, we're getting a look into, into the real you, your real words that are unedited. But uh, when you're first trying to hook them, that's not going to be a good hook. You need a hook that this is an example of the words that I'm spinning and how I'm able to entertain as it may be. So, uh, oh, hey, a question. How do you target KU readers? Oh, hey, I already did that. It's as simple as adding Kindle into Target. That's what I do. Even though people read on Kindle, if they have a Kindle, they're more likely to have Kindle Unlimited because Kindle, Amazon hits them hard to get a Kindle Unlimited subscription. So like like uh, my, uh, my one series, Cats and Their Human Minions, that one, uh, we have a very, very simple targeting, which is pretty broad. It's cat lovers, and there's various cat groups that you can target. And... Kindle owners and the Boolean and so these two sets, if they're a cat lover and a Kindle, that they're getting targeted with free trader ads because all my all my covers have a cat on the on the front screen. <clears throat> so that's that's it, it really is that simple. And also that pricing, if you find that more people are buying it at two ninety nine, possibly move the use your data to your advantage. Maybe your blurb is so damn good. That people are like I'm one click buying that. Well, then maybe move your price up a little bit and try to find where they read it in KU instead of buy it. Use your data to your advantage. <coughs> Would you rapidly or publish it as one eighty hundred and eighty k book? Uh, <clears throat> this is this is a good question, and Michael Michael Anderley and I go round and round on it. We've had huge huge success publishing one one hundred and eighty k book. When you publish 360K books, especially if you don't know that you have 100% read through, is now you're going to have some, some drop off between book one to book two to book three. You have additional marketing challenges. You have additional issues that go on with multiple books in a series. 
with a single 180K book, because first book, you might see 50% read through if you're, if you're getting it into a lot of hands. You might see 10% for free. Actually, you might see 2%, depending on your targeting. You might see 1% to 10% on a free book, depending on your marketing. Good, well-marketed and well-targeted free books, you should get uh, closer to 10%. Still 10%. One in 10 is reading the book and maybe moving on. The uh, And you know that you get 10% because they are moving on anyway. Um you have to know your readership. So if you're a new author, I would float the 160K book first to make sure that the readers like my book. Because if you're getting a pretty decent read through, yes, uh, three books at 499, but also overhead, now you have three covers. You have uh, you still have 180,000 words that need to get edited that you, that you uh, may have to pay for. So three covers versus one. Read through, it becomes a non-issue. And if you're in KU, then you get those as well. So you can tout that 180K word book if you're in the right audit, right target. If that's fantasy, you probably want a single 180K word book. Um, uh, Brian Meeks had success with shorter books uh, in fantasy, but he set that up from the start. He did a big, long train for a, uh, a hard launch, and that one went pretty well, and he got a book bub on the first book fairly soon after the books launched. So all kinds of good things can happen with three books because it gives you three products, but the 180 K book, it's, it's, it can be more lucrative. So I have done both. I like the 180 K. I like the bigger book, but that's uh, it, it, it doesn't take me. I, I can do 180 K book, especially if I have a co-author over, over two or three months. It, while, while I'm doing other things. Whereas if it's just me, you know, that, that might be two months. Other people, if you have a full-time job, that might be a year, two years, especially if you don't know that the readers are going to love you. If you've already released books and you know, then I, I would go with the bigger book and get that in as many hands, unless I knew that I could sell 100% of those first books and the read-through was 90% to books two and three, then you can make more. So it's uh, that simple math, right? 999 versus three, verse three at 499, if you're selling enough copies to offset the cost of the, the extra covers. This is this is your, your benchmark. So if you're paying $200 for covers, you only have 400 that's out, uh, that is uh, an extra spend, vice, everything else. If you're spending a $700 a cover, like my free trader, when I got those, they were about, they were about that much each. So extra covers, hey, not so cool. <laughs> and the uh, monster case files, those were kind of spendy on the covers. And and I was going to release them all individually. And all of a sudden, it's like, now nah, we, we better just do one volume. And so all of these covers, all that expense, we consolidated it into a single volume uh, of, uh, of just the spines. That kind of that kind of pained me, but we're going to use all the covers for ads and marketing. We'll we'll use them eventually, and and one thing you can do is after you've published this 180k book, instead of the the opposite where you publish 360k word books and then over some course of time then you make an omnibus edition, break down the omnibus edition and into 360k novels and put those out a year down the road whenever sales peter off, and you say hey here it is maybe do a little bit of a rewrite say hey this is this is a different, a, a little bit different, but here you go. So, and then you can uh, accept that marketing challenge. It's a new product, kind of, with a new opportunity to target more readers without having to write a whole new book. So you can do, I would do both is, uh, is optimal. So there we are. <clears throat> um, been a little over an hour, and we talked pricing strategies. Now it's a there's so many different things. I, I think that the huge the the thing you're trying to do is you're trying to get your book into as many hands as possible. Dakota has a has a very set list. Lit RPG is extremely hungry. Dakota Kraut is a huge name in the uh, in the industry, so that he's going to have more penetration. Don't don't set your goal based on him, maybe a goal, but set your goal on better than you did last time. 
that's the important thing to to keep in mind. <clears throat> Like uh, Mal Cooper, yes, he has. Uh, she has ninety-two books published. Doesn't matter. She will have ninety-three, then ninety-four, then ninety-five. I have X number of books published, and I will continue to to bolster that. It's just me against me. That's uh, that's all there is. Uh, I, as I say, a rising tide lifts all boats. The only person you're in competition with is yourself. Are you targeting the right readership? Did you write a book that the right readership will love? This is what this is what you're going for, because when the fans love you, then especially as you as you get that book into more and more hands of fans that will love you, then now you're you're getting your sales of books uh, two, three, five. Uh, the book I'm working on right now that's on the other screen, I've already gotten uh, 1,200 words today on. Thank goodness. Yesterday sucked. Day before sucked. <clears throat> day before was great, but uh, day before that was great. But the last two days sucked on getting words. So uh, I got some good words. That one is the 19th book in that uh, in that continuing series and the last one. I'm just tired of writing those characters and I don't want to start repeating myself in such a way that it's a big turnoff. So that one, we know we're uh, we know we're going to get certain sales. We're already energized. We got the cover, a uh, an Andrew DeBell cover. How can you miss with that and a uh, some Jeff Brown typography that kicks. So you can see that over on my author page. I did a cover reveal because it's really cool. I, I I don't sit on covers longer than about eight minutes. As soon as I have it and it's final, I'm like, hey, good, we're sharing it. Keep generating that interest. <clears throat> but that book, it'll launch at $4.99, just like all the others. We'll have a fan day. And this is something that we do that we're kind of strapped into is a fan day of 99 cents. At uh, I publish on Mondays, on Saturday, do one day of 99 cents for the fans. To, to recognize them and thank them for being on board. And uh, I would like to do away with that because I, it gives me a huge one day spike. People sit on it. I was trying to drive a KU reads. It, it, it does kind of, but we get that big one day spike and then it drops on. It's like, ah, you don't want one day spike. It's nice to see a, a continual increase. So encourage, encourage people to borrow that, that used to work well, but it doesn't anymore. The, the one day, so uh, what I did on my own publishing is we set it for a month down the road. Hey, we'll do 99 cents on this volume when the next one publishes. Hey, get the two for one, right? Uh, upsell. That's a good uh, good marketing term going for the upsell. Hey, book two is 99 cents, but book three is here right now. So they can, uh, they can wait or read it in KU and then pick it up. So you get both the KU reads and then the sell, the sale for 99 cents later best if you can do both. And then they pick up uh, the next book in KU, they read it. And a month down the road, you hit them with, hey, it's 99 cents. So I think you want to you want to separate that time a little more than than just five days, because you may not get the page reads, and then you only get a 99 cent sale. But but if you've got happy fans, happy fans are worth it. If they keep coming back, <clears throat> to some extent, you still have to make money. All right. Hey, James, happy to have you on board. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate it. Any other questions? I'm going to bail out here and get back to work. I got stuff to do, got places to go. I got no place to go. I got nobody to see. So places to go and people to see. No, that doesn't apply anymore. I got nowhere to go. Anyway, I'm here and uh, keep charging forward. Oh, and, uh, let's talk. Let's talk 20 books Vegas for everybody who stayed with me. We have 40 people on <clears throat> uh, 20 books Vegas still on. I put out the uh, initial draft schedule. We'll move rooms around just like we did last year. So nobody gets strapped in. Oh my God, you've got these. Hang on, relax, relax, take it easy. Because <clears throat> really when we pump that <clears throat> into sked.com and everybody can dive in and start making their own personal schedules, then we'll see what the, what the needs are. I guessed, hey, these are going to be popular. And some I just threw in like whatever. And we'll see what, uh, what they go. Because we've got rooms that will hold 100 people to a thousand people. And I think it's a thousand that may change. And that would, uh, that would bone us uh, rather significantly, but we'll flex as we need to. We've got a thousand, 500, 350, 150 and a hundred. So that's the different rooms. So in a time slot, we'll look and we'll put the people who have the most, you get the, you get the main stage and so on down the line. So that's what we did. So nobody, uh, nobody freak out. If you see things, 
that oh hey this one's gonna this one's gonna fill up great we want it to fill up and then we'll move it into a bigger room and until we have all of the biggest the biggest uh, uh, 21 23 sessions all in Sam's live the next biggest ones will all be in the Ponderosa the next biggest ones will all be in Hawthorne we'll make sure nobody should be on the outside looking in for any of the the any of the sessions <clears throat> We'll be, we'll be packed for Mike Landerly's session. So we'll see, we may have to remote that upstairs for some folks, but uh, we'll still, we'll put as many as, as we can in there. Cause most people, some people already be drinking, already have side meetings set up by the time uh, Michael comes on on Tuesday afternoon. And then I've got the contract in hand. I need to read that very carefully for 2021. It's looking really good, except for that, uh, that, that deposit isn't, uh, it's not prohibitive. Uh, only o only forty two thousand for the deposit, but it's the uh, it's the cancellation uh, penalty six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars on the cancellation, and that's because the rooms uh, the 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 uh, deposit is not based on the rooms because the rooms all be paid individually, but the cancellation penalty includes as if we were. Uh, front loading all of the rooms so holy crap um <clears throat> the uh so yeah i'm not paying six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in a penalty because then you pay it and you have nothing it's not like hey we even have it we no no it's just i pay that for as a loss so no i'm not paying that <clears throat> um 42 grand we're going to drop that deposit we're going to get a really really nice place we're going to have a great time we're going to be able to scale up so uh, we won't have to have a wait list. It should be all good. People will be able to enjoy a great show in a great location, right on the fricking strip, right a walkway away from anywhere and everywhere. Uh, short hop, you can hop at one of the trams, you can hop the, or, or the monorails. It's Vegas, baby. And that is uh, a, a quick chat with Mark Dawson this morning. It's the big leagues. Off the Strip is cool, the nice homey atmosphere of Samstown, but on the Strip, that's where the big league conferences go, and that's where we're going, because this is we're not Little League anymore. All right, that's a, uh, that's what I have to say about the conference. I'm going to have to raise prices a little bit, because I, uh, I need to have something in the kitty to, to pay these deposit fees to, to offset a little of that. Otherwise, uh, all of my advertising cash is, is gone, and we don't, uh, you know, I, I can, but... Uh, shit, 42 grand here. Just take my money and hold it. Uh, no. So anyway, we'll do that. Uh, after 20 Books Vegas, we'll hold it. We'll hold it on, on my cash until then. And then 20 Books Vegas 2020. And then we'll immediately open it up. And uh, as soon as I sign the contract, I'll tell people where we're going. We're going on the strip. And then uh, you can see we have a thousand room reserve res held for us. So we'll be able to, I don't, I'm not sure how to reserve those yet. Need to, need to sign the contract first. And Vegas is pushing really, really hard to get conferences and conventions back into Vegas. So they are driving these, uh, these projects and, Hey, please commit, commit, commit. I got an out clause in October, so I can bail on the, on the conference in October at no penalty. Cause I have to do a site visit. I've got a site. I'm going in mid October for a site visit. And we'll uh, we'll take a look and see where see where we are. As long as it's the good, and I, I don't see why it's not. Michael and Judith have already visited, and uh, they said this was that it was really nice. It was sweet, huge, huge facility. <clears throat> well, for three thousand people, it would need to be. And uh, we'll uh, we'll price things appropriately. We'll visit. We'll uh, we'll give the final blessing on that site visit. And uh, 2021, 2022 strip baby. All right, everybody have a great day and we will uh, talk to you tomorrow. I haven't talked to Michael yet, but we'll we'll come back on. It won't be at six my time, <clears throat> but it'll be sometime. So maybe eight my time and uh, we'll make it work. All right, you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.